Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 527. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. Uh, possible <clears throat> Possibility due to LGBTQ crackdown in Russia. My Little Pony, Friendship with Magic, is now rated 18 plus on stream sites. Hmm. Uh, if you aren't aware, the current government over in Russia has been uh, hard line, hardening, um, hard line, okay, hard line, when it comes to anything LGBTQ related. We aren't going to delve into geopolitical uh, politics here, but we current uh, with the, hmm, but with current politics politics in place it policies yes current policies in place it looks like a few stream uh, streaming service over there have started labeling my little pony friendship is magic as 18 plus show as an 18 plus show a few russians have speculated that this is due to rainbow dash but there are plenty of other nods to the concept of same-sex relationships in the background over the season, including full-on marriage between Lyra and Bonbon. Bon. Uh, there isn't a whole lot we can do to fix this from a Western standpoint. Hopefully, it's uh, reversed someday. All right. Um. Let's check out. Let Let's check out this picture. Oh, yep. There, there we go. Eighteen plus. So, oof, this one is a bit strange because, um, oh man, this this reminds me of another thing too. Um, okay. So, they, the the Russian government right now, uh, the current government that's running says that um, the show has <coughs> LGBTQ stuff in it and the current government says, no, that's bad, we don't like it. Uh, it's not for uh, the mass public or the, for, for children, something like that. And put it into the 18 plus category, which is kind of strange. I, I mean, I do get it at some point, but, oh man, this is one of those things where my point of view won't, um, won't be the same as your point of view, so we need to agree to disagree kind of deal. <clears throat> and for this one, I don't know, man. Is it taking a bit too far? Probably. But you know, you, you could just have censored some episodes, like, not show it on air, but saying that RD is into girls is one thing. I, I know we, we saw the future. Yes, yes, she is. Yes. She's hooked up with, uh, what was it again? Apple, Applejack. Yeah. So we can see the future. Yeah. What, whatever. I mean, doesn't really matter, but I'm just wondering. What? Why? I? Why go to this length? I mean, the show on itself is pretty good. It teaches a lot of good moral values and whatnot. But if you put it on eighteen plus, no, I don't think teenagers eighteen and higher would want to watch it nowadays. I mean, back in the days, yeah, it was the it was the whole subverting expectation things where. Yay, um, I'm watching ponies just for the lols. Oh no, I'm a fan. Now in 2023, that train has passed and, um, people are just more into other things. Which is kind of sad on my end, but whatever. <clears throat> but this reminds me of a story that a friend of mine told me about the My Little Pony comics. So, one of the few things that Malaysia has is 
we import comics from abroad coming to Malaysia so we can have um, some American comics. Uh, for example, Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, and so on, anything from Marvel and DC, and sometimes from IDW. Uh, those could be currently the uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe's, Turtles, and so on. And My Little Pony was on that list too. But uh, there was a recent, not really the recent, but there was a comic where uh, the first appearance of Aunt Holly and uh, Aunt Holly Day appeared. And that was the comic that got the whole series quote-unquote banned. This, mind you, this is uh, third hand information, sorry, second hand information from a friend that told me about it. But it does make sense because um, Malaysia is kind of a prude in terms of what the government wants the public to see and consume. So anything with sexual content on TV is a big no-no. Uh, there's there's a lot there there's a lot there that I can say that hmm, conservative I guess is the right word for it I I think so yeah I can relate to this this is stupid in so many shapes and form but whatever right let's move on let's move on <clears throat> so next up is giant Pinkie Pie appears at annual holiday parade in McAllen Texas. So, giant cartoon horses, anyone? Apparently, everything really is big in Texas. During the annual holiday parade at McAllen, Texas, they appeared, they apparently pulled out this humongous Pinkie Pie, dragging her along the space, uh, spectators, for spectators, every way to enjoy, sorry, everywhere, everywhere, where, spectators everywhere, to enjoy, okay. I wonder if you can rent her for parties. Uh, imagine the punk at Brony Conventions. Get more pics below. Wow. Okay. Uh, that is cool. That's really cool. So this is the only float there. Okay. Um. Oh. I'm with Seth on this one. Can you rent it out and stuff? Because if it's the only one, I'm just... Why? City of... City of... What's it say? City of me... McAllen. Okay. But why? I, I'm just curious. Why? <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, that's, that's something fun. That's fun. Let's move on. New line of official licensed jewelry released by Alex Wu. A new line of official licensed My Little Pony jewelry has been released by an artisan named Alex Wu in New York. They come in either sterling silver or 14 karat gold and other various colors on top of uh, on on top in the case of a few designs. Hit down below for examples or go hit up the website. So Jewelry is subjective, and yay, uh, this is cool. I, I might get a silver one, but let's see. Okay, you got something from the G1 era, uh, Cutie Mock from G1, I probably think. You got Fluttershy, which is in silver, RD's uh, Cutie Mark, Twilight, awesome. Um, Cutie Marks again, I don't know. Let's go to the website, let's go to the website, because I'm very curious. They don't really discount a price, so, um, no, get lost. They don't really list down a price, so, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, they have rose gold, I think this is called? What's this? Uh, oh, 
Pink gold. All right, they call it pink gold. 14 karat pink gold. Ah, all right. So let's go for mm, a silver uh, charm necklace would cost you around $178. And a pink uh, 14 karat pink gold will cost you around $898. So I have a converter here that can tell me what it is and one of this for me is going to cost me about, uh, it's too small on the screen, so I'll just read it out. About a 831 Malaysian ringgit. Dang, that's expensive. But they look good. Um, as for now, I, I only see two ponies from G4. Um, okay, one here, if you're counting the original classic ponies. But you got Fluttershy and Twilight. Those two are already cool. And you got normal gold. Uh, what's this called? Yellow gold, 24 carat. For, sorry, 14 carat. And for Rainbow Dash's cutie mark, you have... Oh, cool. There's colors. So let's see. Um, You have silver. Uh, okay. okay um, silver. Gold. Stirring silver dash element, so with a bit of coloring and go with a bit of coloring. Cool. Wow. Um, to be honest, I, I just take silver because silver looks nice. But yeah, um, honestly, they're too expensive for my blood. I, I, I can't, I can't, I, I just can't. So if you are interested in this, I guess you could go get shit yourself. Uh, it looks good, but for the price, yeah, man, no, not for me. Anyway, move on to some <clears throat> depressing news. 20% of Hasbro's workforce to be laid off. Uh, 1,100 jobs in all. Following many other companies in the weird economic time, Hasbro announced that 1,100 employees will be laid off. Their reasoning is based on the showing, uh, slowing demand of, sorry, slowing demands for toy sales as the pandemic lockdowns have ended and people are no longer scooping up anything they can get their hands on to entertain their kids. Uh, they expect this market cha challenges to last into 2024 and plan to focus primarily on their bigger brands with gaming and digital as a big focus due to the current trends. They don't mention ponies in, that's right, they don't mention ponies at all in their announcement. Hopefully this is considered a big brand. Hmm. Alright, so that's about it. So a lot of other places reported on this, mostly uh, from, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering fandoms and this is kind of bad. And you're probably wondering, Norman, why did you mention Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons? Aren't they uh under the umbrella for Wizards of the Coast? That is true. And also you have to remember above Wizards of the Coast is Hasbro. Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast, which subsequently owns those two brands. So uh, from what I heard from other shows and other uh, people from the YouTube that reported on this, um, a few game designers, artists, uh, game... Uh, what is it? A, a lot of people who work on D&D got laid off. Um, I'm not 100% sure about Wizards. Uh, sorry, uh, Magic's on uh, Magic side didn't hear anything much, but this is bad because one of the few things that they mentioned is that um, this is a lever that they had had to pull, and saying something like that sounds very bad. Like you you have to lay it off people just to. <clears throat> You had to lay off people so you can just uh, keep the bottom line or get the bottom line. And 
That's just bad. Like, doing this before Christmas. This means that those 1,100 people who got laid off won't be getting their Christmas bonus. And that is terrible. And on top of that, right, the person in charge, the CEO, the CEO, whatever it is, they're getting their bonuses on top of whatever this is. And I, I remember something or oh, someone just mentioned that. One second. Why don't you CEO people take a pay cut? And one of the thing I, one, one of the replies is, oh, um, we don't do that here. Uh, this is not, um, we're not that kind of company. <coughs> Meaning, um, they, they don't want to get a pay cut or don't want to take a pay cut to at least have the workers, be, the, the 1100 workers still have a job. That's just, that's just crappy, man. I do understand the, I, the, the whole idea because Hasbro is a open, uh, it has a open stock exchange in it's an open stock exchange company where they have to think about their shareholders and they want to do right by them by giving them good returns so people can put in more money for investments and whatnot. And yeah, I, I get it. But at the same time too, that's crappy <clears throat> because you you just have to lay off 100, 1,100,000 dollars Sorry, 1,100 people not having... I mean, it, it's just bad, man. It's just bad. And the worst part is, this is just a bucket in the pool. Like, 20% off? <sighs> on a tangent, right? On, on a tangent. Um, Hasbro, as its, um, as its self, as a company on its own, I noticed they haven't been doing too well. And why by, what I mean by this is that their stuff, their products, like Hasbro has a lot of toys, um, poly, I don't think poly pocket, but they have the pump puppies, my little ponies, the Marvel, Star Wars toys and so on. And they have the board games division and so on. And when you take a look, see at how the current environment or world environment is with how children are playing, they're not playing with toys anymore. They're not playing with board games. The, the way children entertain themselves is with electronic devices, a phone, a tablet, a video game console, so on. <clears throat> so that's how they're entertaining them himself even let's just say if they if they do play some toys uh may, maybe one of two of those kids will be playing some star wars toys and okay that's cool hasbro get a cut in that marvel spooderman so on blah 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 so they, they they'll get a cut but with some kids maybe they want to play lego and hasbro not getting any of those like lego is not under hasbro Lego is under the Lego company or corporation. So, yeah, that's taking a cut. And some of you might say, hey, what about those mega blocks? Yeah, I guess, but you have Legos. Why play with mega blocks? Hmm. So, it's one of those things where kids will be focusing on what they want. And the kids nowadays, they, they want to play the Minecraft. Minecraft has uh, Legos have Minecraft. Sorry. Lego has Minecraft now. So yeah. <clears throat> so we we'll see how it goes. I hope that those eleven hundred people who lost their jobs bounce back and show Papa Hasbro what for, right? And last news of the week is <clears throat> 
IDW apparently taking fan art and letter submissions to feature in My Little Pony letter columns. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> we got an interesting tweet from IDW editor uh, Riles Riles Rizosaurus. Uh, yes, uh, Riles Farmer. Name all right on over on the Twitters. Apparently, they are accepting fan art of Pony along with their letters for their My Little Pony letter columns. All you need to do is send in your artwork with the word OK to print to mylittlepony at idwpublishing.com. They obviously can't take all of them, but at least they are a chance. So this is cool. This is very cool. So if you guys are wondering what this is, um, um, Sorry, I'm just trying to process my words because I'm dealing with um, Americans and other countries who are used to the letter columns for the comics, but some other countries don't have it at all. Okay, so um, letter columns in a comic book are fan-submitted questions, comments, praise, concerns, and now they want to do art. So what you usually do what you usually do is you send some kind of question to um, the publisher, in this case, uh, IDW, saying that, uh, or you could just ask a question, um, something to do with, wait, if this happened here, what will happen there, and so on. And then the publisher or the editor and so on will probably answer your question, stating, ah, uh, this reason, that reason, blah, 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 and... Okay, you you have a answer published in the next issue. Uh, in this case here, uh, same thing, but also you add to uh, you add fan art in the comics. And one of the few things where <clears throat> in doing this, uh, you give them the okay. So um, they say here okay to print, meaning that you give full rights to IDW Publishing to print out your artwork in their comics. Uh, probably you you won't probably won't get any compensation for your art being printed. And what I mean by compensation is you won't get any money. Yep. You're just doing it for uh, the love of the fandom, the love for the comics and the love for ponies. But alternatively what this do for you as the artist is give you exposure box. And what I mean by that is that if you give has uh, sorry if you give IDW the publishing rights to publish sorry or to print out your books without getting any compensation, uh, people who will read the comics and probably see the back of the page will see your art and it'll give you exposure. I'm also guessing that IDW will probably print out your details like name of artists and where to find them. Uh, probably you are on DeviantArt or probably Twitter. So that is an option for you there. So yeah, this is a good way to kind of get your artwork out there. And yeah, I mean, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Probably spamming them every month is not a good idea. Who knows? Like, j j just send them at least. Once every three months. Yeah. Maybe we that's not, I don't know. We'll see how it works. We'll see how it works. And that's the end for this episode. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is what have I been doing my week? So <clears throat> it's been a while and um been pretty busy with work and whatnot. So haven't been doing a lot of um so haven't been doing a lot of news. Also, the news kind of stuck in a weird way. So yeah, th this this week is kind of packed with a lot of news. And the, 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 if you notice the date I'm recording, it is cutting it pretty close. But besides that, <clears throat> um, sorry, besides that, 
I, I've been doing the usual stuff that I've been doing, um, magics and whatnot. But I, I also did a few things. I, I did a bit of traveling. If you notice the Instagram that I have, I've been, I, I rarely post much stuff, but it's there. It's there. So yeah, um, been traveling and it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> Nothing much to say. It's close to Christmas and I was thinking I, I probably do this one for you guys just in case the year ends and I don't have any episode. I feel bad for that. So yeah, um, let's, let's, how do I put this? Uh, give me a second. Yeah, I mean, um, have this new show to publish for you guys. So yay. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing much, nothing much. I, I'll guess I'll just wrap it up here. I'll, I'll wrap it up here. So anyway, um, <clears throat> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at emissiongmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And why is that? To stay current. Okay, Grammarly. I'll decide to put that later. Links are in the show notes below. If you... Why? Okay. I, I, I'll i agree to that. <clears throat> if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show with every support. You can get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I like Lucky Knight, Jacob, and also Master of Like. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya!